Welcome back. It's Sean from Connor Manufacturing. We're back in the shop. Bro, are you and seriously going to do the same old boring intro? Yeah, why don't you try to be a little more original, man? Guys, what do you want from me? I'm a one-man band. I'm doing my best. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Sean from Connor Manufacturing. This is going to be the third and final time you ever have to look at these parts, I promise. So we've got them back from hard anodizing. To catch you guys up, there was a part one, part two, this is now part three. If you wanna go back, you can watch it. We got our parts back from hard anno. They've been plugged, uh, two holes on each one. We're gonna get them bagged and tagged and off to the client and kind of go over those processes and then also for a little bit of housekeeping housekeeping we're gonna go back to fusion real quick and i'm gonna go over the dialogue boxes and stuff that i messed up on and did not show on the previous broaching video so we'll go into a little more detail there and then also probably quickly go over why the rotary brooch wouldn't have worked for this application or didn't make as much sense for this application all right guys so going over the quick housekeeping on the stuff that didn't show up on the screen capture last time. Quickly just recapping the broaching and then we'll move on. So, uh, on the screen here, you're gonna see that I have these folders. Folder one, folder two, folder three, folder four. Those are all four individual holes. And then in there, we've got our patterns and our actual toolpath. So I go to edit and this is where the post processor that was edited by DSI, this is where it's gonna show up. So right up here, post properties, that box, you normally would not see that in this tray dialog box. So when we click that, spindle orientation for this particular folder, this is, or this tool path is at 30 degrees orientation to the spindle. And then you see that checkbox, use spindle orientation. The minute that you click that box, it kills your spindle speed, locks your spindle, you get that M19, S30 that we that I was referencing on the previous video. Super slick. Then when we edit the pattern, something that we had talked about right here, quantity 38, that's where I'm taking 38 step overs at one thousandths at a time. If I wanted the 10 millimeter hex to be bigger, I step over more. If I want it to be smaller, less. And that's, and then I'm telling it the step distance right here. So I can go from a 1,000 step over to a 10th step over, thou and a half, so on and so forth. Direction, all of those things you still have in here. Super slick, super easy. Boom, boom, post your code, no hand edit. The other great comments that were brought up in the YouTube video were like, why didn't you rot rotary broach, those kind of things. The, one of the main reasons is that this Z height right here is so high that I would have had to have had a custom rotary brooch made. And then the way that it works with the wobble, it being longer than whatever distance, that has an effect. And a lot of the cutting pressure would be higher because we're cutting into the corners and we're taking out 32 thousandths of material six times on my tiny little BT30 spindle. And I just didn't want to cut that much material versus like if this was a spline, a spline isn't really cutting, a spline is swaging, kind of like a roll form tap. So that was the reason, quick down and dirty, as to why we decided to single point on that last video you guys saw. All right guys, we're gonna go over real quick, a little tool that we're gonna make and this is just going to be an installation tool. It's going to help us press in the pins on part A of the split sprocket. You've seen us build part A. You've seen us build part B. We have to press some pins in. These pins are a quarter inch dowel pins essentially, but one side has been knurled, so it's flared. So it's going to press into one side, and on the other part, it's going to be a slip fit, right? The problem is, is we got to put two pins in, in part A. We don't want the pins to get crooked. We don't want them to can't jam them in there, get them stuck. So we're gonna build a quick little fixture tool that's gonna allow us to quickly and efficiently press all these pins in for the assembly process of these parts as we get them ready to go out the door to our client. So on this part, you'll see these bottom holes here. That's where the top part of the pin's gonna slip into. 
And then on the back side, we have these two little recessed pockets. We're going to press in two magnets and use a little bit of Loctite to hold them in so that we get positive retention on the pins so that a one person can assemble two pins at one time and have enough hands to complete that task. So just like always, we have our stock. In here, you can see that we have our clearance plane so that I don't crash on the RoboDro. And we will just kind of quickly cl click through all of this. Something we did was I just threw the Connor Manufacturing logo on there just for fun. We used uh, some rotary multi-axis tool paths. I just brought over the bandsaw, lobbed it off. It's not a part for a client, so it doesn't have to be beautiful. It's just for us. And you can kind of see that Connor Manufacturing logo. We'll make this part, we'll go over to the bridge port and we'll get these pins pressed in. I'm gonna interrupt this video for a quick word from our sponsor, DSI. DSI is a reseller of software. I purchased my Fusion license and my Camplete license through them. They do training, they do support, they do post-processing, editing, anything that you need from them. They're a great company. You can call them, text them, email them, slide into their DMs, they'll help you out. Great company. I got to know those guys last year at a summit here in California. They're having another summit this year in May in Chicago at the Mazak headquarters. They're gonna have some sick mill turns there. There's gonna be a ton of food. Really the big benefit, ton of networking. You're gonna be around guys. You're gonna get to ask a ton of questions, in-depth stuff about fusion, programming, all that stuff. Check it out. The link is in the description below. All right guys, through the power of editing, this part is made. So we machined it. We pressed in and used a little bit of Loctite on those magnets. And so to demonstrate the purpose, these little pins, there's a slip fit. We got a thou and a half or clearance or so. So it grabs those pins so that I can then press it in on the bridge port as we go through and assemble a bunch of parts. It makes it quick, it makes it easy. I won't get these pins canted or crooked and it'll be the same every time. All right guys, so using that fixture that we machined, we're gonna press these pins in. Forgive the background noise, but after all, we're a machine shop, so it's what we do, it's loud. So those magnets that we had uh, glued in there that you saw a little bit ago, boom, pins are there. It holds them, they're aligned, they're straight. Gives us the perfect alignment. We press it in, we pull our part out. We move on to the next part. So quick overview, part A gets the pins pressed in, Part B gets the nuts dropped in and then captivated with the snap rings. Then we rubber band it. We add the nuts and bolts. We put it in a bag and it's ready to be boxed and shipped to the client. What do you want? I have a package for you. So something that kind of just helps is I use this Allen key to keep this nut from getting canted and twisted. And I can get it over there. Boom, it goes into the hole. We take this tiny little snap ring and we drop the snap ring in. And all that's doing is preventing this nut from falling out if it gets turned upside down. We're gonna do this four times per part on a whole bunch of parts. With the pins being pressed into part A, the nuts and the snap rings being installed in part B. Now it's ready to assemble, bag and tag them and get them shipped to the client. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in today. This is the not so glamorous side of the business, right? Packaging, boxing, making sure that your part gets to the client safely and in one piece, right? It's something that small job shops, I see all you guys out there grinding, right? We don't have a shipping department. We don't have a cleaning department, a deburring department. We're wearing all the hats. We're getting it done from start to finish. So thanks for following along. Thanks to DSI for sponsoring these last little, this little video series. And uh, there are links in the bio. And I hope you guys got something out of this. I love you guys. I'm happy to be here. Thanks.